Extending southward a thousand miles from the east coast of Siberia is the vast wilderness of the Kamchatka Peninsula. This land of towering volcanoes, steaming geysers, and endless tundra is one of the most remote and rugged places on Earth. There is an ancient rhythm which has echoed through this dramatic landscape for thousands of years. It is sung by the reindeer people, hunters and fishermen, nomads and village folk. They dance to this ancient voice, which speaks to all who will listen, the song of Mukamor. Ludmila Vagal is a Koryak dancer. For many years, she toured the Soviet Union, performing the traditional dances of her people. But now she has returned to her home, a place greatly changed from her childhood, to rediscover her connection to that land. Like her mother, Ludmila will someday answer the call to become a shaman, a messenger between her people and the spirit world. As part of their ritual life, the Koryak use the Amanita muscaria mushroom, which they call wapak. The mushroom is one of various traditional vehicles they use to gain access to the spirit world, a connection to the sacred forces unseen by secular eyes. The camp's dominant structure was a 50-foot diameter yurt. There we joined five Koryaks for a meal of smoked salmon and reindeer jerky. They told us that two elderly residents, who appeared to be in their 70s or 80s, eat the mushroom regularly. This confirmed what we had heard before. It is predominantly the oldest Koryaks who are still eating mukamor. Native people of Kamchatka have used mukamor for as long as they can remember, perhaps since the time when they first followed their reindeer herds into the peninsula. With the ebb and flow of the seasons, the nomadic reindeer herders roam through the vast tundra, far from the more Russianized fishing villages. <laughs> It's sitting on
Ludmilla became our guide. We traveled nearly 3,000 miles together on this voyage of discovery. We were searching for very different things, and each of us in our own way found much more than we first imagined. For hundreds of years, Kamchatka had been a remote outpost of Imperial Russia. The indigenous peoples struggled with the occupying Cossacks, who extracted tributes of furs. The only way of avoiding the fur tax was to convert to the Russian Orthodox faith. With the arrival of the Europeans also came the spread of many Western diseases so deadly to native peoples. With the coming of the Soviet era, the last groups of traditional people encountered an almost overwhelming force. Resettlement programs accompanied a concerted effort to assimilate native peoples. Shamans were outlawed and went underground or were killed, and the use of the sacred mushroom, forbidden by the Soviets, was carefully hidden by those who survived. In the last 50 years, hundreds of thousands of immigrants have occupied the few cities and towns in the peninsula, bringing with them the scourge of alcohol. Natives relocated to the new Soviet towns quickly succumbed, but there remained a hardy few pursuing the old ways of herding and fishing. The following day, our quest for knowledge about Mukamor led two of us deep into the woods to meet Marina and Alexei Ketchgalkot, a fishing family living far from town on a sandbar of the Tolovka River. <laughs> You want to do it, Loi? Oh, yeah. oh, do it. I think so. That'd be great. There you go. So. Oh. You get out. Ah, <laughs> 
<laughs> Shortly after we arrived, Marina proudly showed us this year's harvest of mukamor, drying on a pile of dead branches in the center of camp. According to tradition, the harvest and preparation of mukamor must be done in the proper way as to not offend the spirit of mukamor. The Amanita muscaria spread to Kamchatka as the northern birch forests recovered from the last ice age. Native peoples commonly use mukamor as an aid to communication with the supernatural world. Most of these people attribute a conscious life to all forms of material reality. Every creature, each plant, rock or tree, the wind, the rain, the sun and the moon, all have an indwelling spirit. We're on the cutting edge of washroom technology here. <laughs> Salmon eggs, candies, oh my goodness. dried oh, salmon, oh, tea. I don't know what this thing is here. Look is at this fried stuff. Bread? I don't know, but what's this, Lori? This? Yeah. Huh? Halva. Normal. Yes, I only check. This is your house. This is great. Yeah. yeah. Let's go see what's inside. Moment. Wow! Aha! Going to bed so early. Oh, does this look cozy? Good night. Spokoini nochi. Oh, so nice. Oh, it's incredible. It's incredible. Hey, Loi, come look at this bedroom. It's fantastic. She's giving me the f the full demonstration the here. Demonstration. They've even got a, a, a anti bug device here. Really? Look at this. Oh. They sleep under the ferns. Oh my God! You got. A little cook stove in here. Okay, too soon? You eat it Камчатка, Толовка, Американ Дружба, Колорадо. After just a few hours together, we walk back to town. 
And Marina sang her father's song given to him by Mukamor. When the spirit of Mukamor speaks to people, it gives them a song. So each man or woman has a unique part in this ancient and eternal chorus. Beginning Muhammad. Throughout our journey, we were both surprised and put to task by unpredictable events. However, one of the things we could always rely upon was the warmth and curiosity of the many children that came out to greet us whenever we landed. Another constant throughout our trip was our daily mushroom forays into the tundra. In just a few hours, we sometimes found more mushrooms than we had seen all season long back at home. Heading south after ten days in the tundra, vivid images came to mind of a shaman, stunningly filmed the year before by our Russian friend and interpreter, Lina Cheban. Like a ghost from our collective past, the prophetic words of this tundra sage were the reason I had joined this unlikely expedition. Every year on the 3rd of October, 72-year-old Tatiana goes to a hillside near her home, to the site of her mother's grave. This is the ritual raven dance. All indigenous groups from the Bering Sea region trace their beginnings to the raven, the greatest of all mythological beings. Do you eat Muhammad when you do your shamanistic Когда вы делаете свои церемонии? Когда вы шаманите, вы едите мухоморы или нет? I will explain. I'm already 
I have oh, already a shaman in. without any uh, any mushroom. Noch, Day oh, and night yeah. and morning. Sometimes my hands are like magnets. No, Muhammad. I don't shaman? eat Muhammad. Other shaman do? I am strong without Muhammad. I can't put all this bad food into my, into my, uh, into my mind because those who eat muhammors, they watch TV and they dream of unreal. And those like you, you can eat muhammor and you become stronger. You become stronger. I don't need extra strength. I'm strong enough. I, I am shaman in seventh generation. I have, yes, this is my, so I am strong enough because all my generations are behind me and the universe is for me and the sun is for me and the moon is for me. I see, even I sleep, I see. Ah, if I see the dream uh, when I, uh, bad luck happens to somebody and I can see in my dreams what happens so I can predict something. Yes, yeah, this will be the Muhammad dance. This is where she finds the mushroom and what she is doing when, when she finds it. Woo! <laughs> For thousands of years, the indigenous people of Kamchatka have lived in poetic harmony with this magnificent land. In a span of just a few hundred years, they have nearly vanished, victims of our collective greed, exploitation, and indifference. What will we have lost when all that remains are the ghostly echoes on the Arctic wind of the Song of Mukamore?